from an array of highly secure, top secret locations around South Texas. This is the Spurs Insider Podcast, post rodeo road trip edition. I am your host, Mike Finger, joined by Express News, sports editor Nick Talbot, and beat writers Tom Orsborne and Jeff McDonald. And I'm not sure where to start this week, so let's just start with the biggest news happening with your local cagers. And that obviously is the end of the Thomas Sadoransky era. Does anybody want to weigh in on this momentous uh, milestone, this momentous departure that the city is going through as we speak? I just think it was it's unfortunate that the Wizards have already played their game at the AT&T Center. Uh, so we don't get to watch a tribute video. They'll have to wait till next year. It's going to be a you good know. one. Uh, yeah, it'll be him like uh, getting off the bus. And uh, uh, practicing and yep. playing, playing about uh, 12 minutes in that one game. Against the Wizards. If there's one thing, Tom, is if there's one word to sum up uh, Thomas Sadoransky and the legacy that he left with your Spurs, what, what, what one word would you think of? One, one word. Uh, it's sad, sad. Uh, I, I, see, I really see, what I was going for was I thought he was a pro. Was he not yeah, a pro? Yeah. I hear you. Well, I was looking forward to talking to him because there's a there's a writer from uh, the Czech Republic who corresponds with me quite a bit. And Mm -hmm. uh, he assured me that Thomas was a great interview and that we would really enjoy him. So, um, you know, it's kind of like with uh, Juancho Hernan Gomez, Um, Uh you know, but but we did get to talk to uh, Hernan Gomez, which was nice. And he was a pleasant, pleasant fellow. Uh, from Spain and you know I was looking forward to uh, I've been to Prague so I was gonna I was gonna talk to a uh, uh, sad Saturday. answer about that yeah so it's yeah. sad it's sad it is sad all these guys were just barely getting to know I think Wancho is appearing in a new movie about uh, like a Hollywood movie like he's, he's the star of it isn't he in an Adam Sandler film like I'm not making that up we, we missed out on it's we true. missed out on a uh, uh, yeah. uh, Hollywood uh, you know celebrity in the middle of all this. So, so another, another sad piece of news. Is there anything? I feel, like, I feel like the day that was pointed out to me by someone, I thought, Hey, that would be kind of actually a, a thing people would be interested in. And I should talk to him about it. Uh, he was, he was traded. Yeah. So, well, in the middle of all this sad news, is there anything positive to talk about with your local cagers as they, they are now, we are taping this on uh, Wednesday, March the 2nd. Um, the Spurs returned to the AT&T center uh, which is being scrubbed as we speak, uh, 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 sanitized, uh, all the all the manure and what have what you. Did, has been what did Bill Land doing there? Uh, I was going to make something along the lines of a Jeff McDonald joke, but okay. Yes, I circumvented uh, that. <laughs> yes. Yeah, the, the rodeo road trip was basically two normal-sized road trips. It was not the longest – if you want to be pedantic about it, it was not the longest true road trip of the season. I think Tom sure. Orsborne was on that in early January where they trekked across the Eastern uh, seaboard for a while. By, by they, the were, way, they were four and four in the rodeo road trip. Uh, what, what do y'all think about that? It's almost always been that way where it's, uh, it's dissected in some way by the all-star break. There've been a couple where it's been like a, like eight games in one shot, but since 2003, I would, I would hazard a guess that most of them have been like a, like a, a four and four or a five and three, or something like that. So, anyhow, to your point, just just uh, just on uh, just statistically speaking, forward from that trip, I think that's pretty much their their best trip in a while. I mean, I don't really count the last one because it. Got, I think last year they actually went two and one on their rodeo trip, because the rest of it just got rescheduled and scuttled by COVID. But but before that, they they've had some just horrific. You know, they had for for the longest time that was their best time of the year they had like um like until 2015 they never had a losing one and then they started oh, having have, then the last couple of years they've had some really bad losing ones like some two and seven type losing ones um so four and four i think you take like it's been the, it's been their best most productive rodeo trip in, in a long long time and it started with Derek white on the team and ended with him not on the team and so you you know it's not like they traded like like uh you know Tim Duncan or something, but it did sort of reshape 
how the team is performing and, and set up and functioning um, since that first game in Cleveland. On a kind of a, a strange note, the, the ending in Memphis, it has to go down. You guys can weigh in, of course, but the most entertaining performance by a Spurs opponent, possibly in franchise history. I mean, there's some Whoa, games. That's a, where, that is a huge statement from Tom Orsborn, who's been around yes. for a lot of franchise history. Yeah, I mean, there's been other games, uh, Tatum, uh, Kyrie Irving, where they hang 50 plus, you yeah. know, and there, but, but has there been a more entertaining performance where you, you kind of forget, you know, if you're a Spur fan, a diehard Spur fan, you kind of forget for a moment that he's killing your team, but you just say, yeah. I can't wait to see what that guy does next. Has there been a more memorable 0.4 shot in Spurs history? <laughs> Not that I can remember. Okay, I'll say this. That's obviously a, a, a joke. The Fisher thing still haunts the listeners of this podcast, I'm sure. But like, in terms of uh, uh, athleticism and just a holy crap, holy zero point four shot. That the the Morant full court. By the way, great great pass from Stephen Adams yes. to yes. put just the perfect amount of air underneath it. But that the degree of difficulty on Morant zero point four just is it, it dwarfs the degree of difficulty on the Derek Fisher spin around and make his zero point four. Like that was that was one of the dangest one of the dangest shots I've ever seen in my life. Uh, it was incredible. And then that's after the, the dunks that he was just flushing on, on Spurs left and right. It was a hell of a performance from John Morant. Tom, you're right. And you, you sit there and you say, like you just said, Mike, um, that was an incredible play, but he had two other incredible plays. Uh, He's really know, the, something. Yeah, the three-point shot from the logo, the – Scaling uh, Mount uh, Pearl for the for the dunk, um, you know, yeah. it's just an incredible performance. Enter- highly entertaining. Yeah, I think that's the that's what's going to be aggregated from this podcast when I put it all over the the hoops rumors. As uh, is, is the Express News reports that John Moran is really something. <laughs> um, <laughs> that, that's that's going to cost some waves because he really is. That was something else. What else sticks out? I don't don't want to go. I don't want to go out on a limb here. Like I don't want to go way out on a limb, um, Mm -hmm. make up a hot take. But uh, yeah, John Moran is something. He really is. He might even be better than that uh, Zion guy. I think he got drafted behind. I think I don't think there's any question about that. I think that there, and that's just looks. uh, That looks more and more. Kawaiish by the day, what's going on in New Orleans. We're not going to turn this into a, a Zion uh, podcast, but oof. I got no information, but it, it doesn't sound like Zion's ever playing for the Pelicans ever again. Yeah. Uh, I mean, you know, it, it, it looks bad. They're going through their, uh, they had their Mar- Mardi Gras yesterday. Uh, so at least they know how to party a little bit, but things look rough basketball wise for that franchise. Is there any, is there any uh, thing else from the uh, rodeo road trip that you fellas, uh, feel merits discussion well i sort of mentioned i sort of mentioned they they traded Derek they traded Derek white after the first game and we've seen um you know some other guys thrust into some other roles um devin vassell's a starter now lonnie walker is sort of um i don't know what, how you want to phrase it just freed up to uh to sort of you know do his thing and i think both those guys have been 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 pretty good since the since the uh, trade deadline. You know, Vassell's a start, and, and Lonnie Walker, I think, uh, as we sit and record this, is in the midst of his best five six game stretch of his career, which is is um, certainly we've talked about his consistency being an issue, but he's been consistent for five or six games, so that's that's good too. And I I, I think it's just um, you know with with Vassell, obviously his opportunity is is obvious, and that he's the starter now where Derek White was, but I think taking Vassell off the second unit has given Lonnie Walker a little more ownership of that second unit and he's taken advantage of it. So good for him. And we've talked about his contract situation on here ad nauseum. I don't know if we need to go over it again, but it's a, it's, it's good timing. It's good timing for him to sort of show off what he can do um, kind of down the stretch run here. And we'll see if he can keep it up. Is he um, a guy who you like in that role long-term? Like obviously Manu Ginobili taught us that it takes a special type of mentality, a special type of player to thrive. 
Uh, when you're not getting starting minutes all the time, um, I'm, I'm just curious how you guys feel that he fits into that, because if he does come back, you would think that that could be his role for for a while. Um, I don't think Keldon Johnson or Devin Vassell or DeJounte Murray is going anywhere. Um, so do you, to Jeff's point about him kind of finding a home as the sixth man, as the leader of that second unit, is that something that you like uh, for this franchise moving forward? Yeah, sure. <laughs> yeah, I mean, he's, he's uh, you know, it, it's, it's been kind of neat to see, um, and Pop pointed out in Memphis, you know, he, he kind of tapped the brakes on talk about uh, uh, Lonnie turning the corner consistency-wise, but it, it appears that that's what's happening. Um, so, you know, it's kind of neat to see. Um, we forget or I forget how, how young he is, how little experience he's had, you know, uh, coming out of Miami so quickly, but it's, it's just kind of neat to see his development. If this really is a turn the corner moment, it's, it's kind of cool to see. Another youngster or, or younger than you realize fella uh, who's, I guess we could talk about because of the, uh, the way he played over the rodeo road trip is 24 year old. Uh, grizzled veteran Zach Collins. Um, I was speaking to one of the beat writers, one of one of one of, one of the, Jeff McDonald at the, uh, I believe it was in Washington D.C. This was a hey, about, this was a private conversation about. Um, I know a I know a Portland fan who just was sick of Zach Collins several years into his mm. uh, tenure up there in Portland. He was a top ten pick, and I think this this goes to. Just the, 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 the way expectations um, can affect how a fan base or how an organization views a player. And I think that when the, when the trailblazers of, of Portland, Oregon drafted Zach Collins out of Gonzaga University as a top 10 player, they, they saw him as this guy who should be a top 10 performer. And he never became that. He was injured a lot. And, and there got to be a point when like Portland fans just didn't want to see him anymore. They were sick of him. Oh, he... He's he's a he's a bust. He's a disappointment. Blah blah blah. He's still twenty four years old and a top ten talent. And I think that um, as we were saying up there in front of in in the uh, in the DC corner in front of Keldon Johnson's extended family, um, when the Spurs just kind of throw a, a a low free agent contract on him and take a flyer on him, all of a sudden the expectations are the other way, and anything you get out of him you're kind of happy with, and it seems like this, this could work out for them. Am I, am I wrong about that? <laughs> oh, I have to have the opinion here. Um, I don't know. Yeah. I think, I think, I mean, who knows? We'll see. It's a good gamble. I think it's a good gamble. Yeah. Like, and not really much of a gamble. Yeah. It's, I mean, it's hard to, it's hard to watch him play right now and be, Oh, that guy's going to be something else because he's still really just finding his legs and just figuring out, Figuring out basketball again after having so much time off. Although, I mean, you watch like Clay Thompson. He didn't take that much time to get back in the group. But anyway, um, you know, I don't know that Zach Collins is a star, but I think he's definitely a guy that can help you. Um, but it's just it's hard to judge him on the, the seven or eight games that he's played right now because he's not really in the flow of things yet. But he has good moments. You see moments of um, – on both ends, really. You see moments on both ends where he, he looks like a guy that can help you going forward. It's just going to take some time. I think he's this. I think the end of this season for him is just about getting acclimated, maybe stretching out the minutes a little bit, um, figuring out ways to contribute, and then you know, sort of an audition for next season, a bigger role than than the you know twelve to fifteen minutes he's been playing off the bench. I think he could be a bigger part of this team and this rotation next season. I'd venture to say he's been. Um better than I would have expected for somebody who missed as much time as he's missed. And again, we're not calling him a star, but I think it's been a pleasant development. And I think with um, like Jakob Pertl's in a weird spot too, in that um, he signed for one more year and uh, you know, the Spurs would love to keep him around forever, but he's going to get a lot of attention next year. If, If your Spurs are not contenders next year at the deadline, there's good. They're going to, as they did this past year, supposedly, I mean, there's going to be a lot of people interested in Jakob Pertl, who's been playing great at both ends. And then if he makes it to free agency, he's going to get a lot of attention there. So um, not, I'm not jumping ahead to saying the Spurs are going to move on from Jakob Pertl, but 
it would be nice for the franchise to um, have options there and Zach Collins could give them one. Uh, and I guess that's all rather obvious, but um, something to monitor. Um, another player um, who also is on the, on the younger side, who I guess there was a, a statement that uh, one San Antonio head coach, Greg Popovich, had mentioned in Washington that uh, Joshua Primo would not be returning to the G League for the rest of the season. He was be, he would be up for good. That that came with an asterisk because the Spurs did have what three three days off in a row this week, and they got him a quick game in, in Austin this week. But he's not going back down there at the expense of NBA games anymore. And it looks like he's going to have an extended audition uh, the rest of this season as well. Yeah, he's. Um... He's going through growing pains right now uh, with the um, – and you guys can speak better to his performance uh, when he fouled out in uh, – where was it, Miami or Washington? I think, I think he got Bogart in there. Okay. <laughs> okay. And then um, he got benched uh, in Memphis uh, in the second half. You know, uh, we, we talked about that um, – buzzer beater incredible buzzer beater by Morant poor Josh was you know was attempting to guard Morant on that who, play who are you talking about Tom uh Josh Primo. poor poor who well, there's poor who we got we got we got two Joshes and a jock I now. know I know and we, we got we don't, jock. We don't know who you're talking about anymore and we got a jock too uh no yeah, that's what I mean but I think yeah. I think I think Landale's first name is actually Jockawa yeah that's true <laughs> Anyway, anyway guys, I'm sorry, Tom, we're being juvenile. Go ahead. Uh, Josh, Joshua witnessed, uh, you know, was on the court there trying to defend Morant on that inbounds play. And I don't know if that carried over to the second half, but um, Pop benched him and threw uh, the other Josh, the older Josh Richardson into the game. And then uh, the younger Josh goes to Austin. He had a, a pretty – Tough game, statistically shot poorly last night, um, had six turnovers, although we don't know what, you know, what the turnovers are about, kind of like interceptions. You don't know who's at fault really sometimes just seeing the bare numbers. But, you know, it's kind of a rough patch for him uh, going through some growing pains. And uh, uh, yeah, it's all for the better, I guess. You just got to go through them. And, and uh, you know, DeJounte Murray talked about that after practice today about, you know, supporting young Joshua and, and trying to get him through this. So uh, when, um, when Greg Popovich mentioned to us that um, Joshua Primo mm -hmm. tends to get, he, he said he tends to get bogarted a lot when he goes to the line. How many, uh, how many members of your local case or your San Antonio Spurs do you think are familiar with that term, Tom? Mm, boy. The same number that know what cagers mean. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that's the guy yeah. from a Casablanca, right? Yeah. I think that's actually where it came from. Oh. Um, so I think so, it was like, because Bo, cause Bogard, Humphrey Bogard played, you know, guys who would just get their way, uh, you know, swaggering. Oh. Fellas. I remember so that. My, you I remember the scene in the movie where he plays, uh, he plays really tough defense against Lauren Bacall. That's. Well, Lauren Bacall well, isn't even in that movie, but uh, uh, whatever. I don't care. He was, uh, yeah, last night. Uh, if you turn in for your younger viewers, listeners. Oh, I was thinking of uh, Ghostbusters. That was the yeah. movie I was thinking of. I'm wrong. If you tune in to, uh, if you tune in to Turner Classic Movies uh, movie this week, uh, they're they're doing uh, 31 Days of Oscar as they annually do, and uh, uh -huh. I think Bogey. In the last 24 hours, he's had like four movies and Casablanca hasn't been shown yet. So uh, if you want to find out what Bogart means, Bo getting Bogarted, uh, tune in to turn TCM this week, uh, this month, and you'll likely find out. I'm going to sound older than usual, but like, and, and this is also a, this is kind of the Josh, John Moran is really something kind of take, but Casablanca holds up, man. I think like even kids, like even even today's oh. kids would be entertained by that movie. It's incredible. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> another another hot take. So we're turning into an entertainment podcast here, but Castle I mean, does hold up. 
I mean, your Spurs are 20 and 90. I'm not sure what else there is to, uh, I'm not sure if, if we're getting into a lot. If you want, if y'all want to talk about the pick and roll and what they have to do um, to, uh, to, to handle the Aaron Fox's box, you know, a, a ball screens tom- tomorrow against the Kings, we can, but I'm not sure that this is um, this podcast forte um, breaking down the, uh, the, uh, the defensive switches and whatnot. Uh, we have not mentioned the record that shouldn't be a record, but that everyone will get excited about uh, your, your, <laughs> head coach of the San Antonio Spurs, Greg Popovich. At the time of this recording, one victory short of Don Nelson's regular season career record. Um, Too short of breaking it. Uh, I think that we'll just, we'll, we'll just say it'll be a cool moment for him. It'll be a cool moment for the Spurs. I think Pop would like to get it over with. I think he might actually enjoy some of the, uh, some of the pop, pomp and circumstance, maybe not all of it, but it'll, it'll, it'll be a cool thing. And uh, hopefully this will get done um, for all of our sake within the next week or so. Uh, mm-hmm. So we can, we, we can kind of get this behind us, but it, it has been, it has been cool to go from city to city uh, from opponent to opponent and, and hear all of these coaches young and old from the West Unself junior and Taylor Jenkins to the, Eric Spelstra, who's been uh, battling Pop really as an assistant and, a, and as a head coach way back to the Spurs' first title. Uh, all, all these coaches with genuine um, admiration for, for the man and, and well wishes. It's, it's, it's been a cool thing. I think even Pop has enjoyed some of that. You know, we, we ask all these coaches about Pop approaching the record and, mm-hmm. and not, not a one of them, not one, has said, but it's a stupid record anyway. You're right. You're right. I'm just wanted to point. I just wanted to point that out. Apropos of nothing, I was just say it was gonna be appropriate if he can break the record against the Lakers. It just seems it just seems funny if he does it at home against the Lakers. But that's a possibility. It, it would it would be sort of I don't know. If poetic is the word. Just to have LeBron in the building for that. After all the battles that they've had over the years, that would be a. I don't know if and LeBron see, would like it so much, but. And see, LeBron can can commiserate with the and commiserate's the wrong word, but LeBron is another great example of uh, what you know my feelings on these records. And that I believe I'm going to sound like an idiot if I'm wrong here, but I believe earlier this season, LeBron James passed Kareem Abdul-Jabbar in terms of um, all-time point scores in NBA history, um, regular season and postseason combined. And I believe it was to pretty little fanfare, even though that's a better record than the one that he's going to uh, to break in a year or two. Uh, that's 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 relegated to regular season only. Um, it's kind of the same thing. Like, why are we celebrating the uh, the regular season one more than the combined one? It's just the way we do things, I suppose. But yeah, that that would be cool if uh, if that happens against the Lakers at the AT and T Center on Monday. The reeling Lakers. Lakers are, Boy, Lakers are not doing great lately. Who would have guessed but, this when they signed uh, Russell Westbrook? Yeah, <laughs> that, did not, that did not work out well. I would call the Lakers a dumpster fire, but that's an insult to dumpsters and fires. It's it's pretty yeah. it's pretty it's pretty bad. They, I mean, as soon as you saw the news come out that they chose Westbrook over DeRozan, as a, someone who covered DeRozan all this whole time in San Antonio, you just kind of saw sat back there and said, "Well, that wasn't smart." And that now it's kind of come to fruition. It it really looks really looks bad. But not to get all first take here again, but it just does not look does not look great for the for the cagers of Los Angeles. It does not. I was sort of curious how you were gonna spend talking about the Lakers into some Pollyanna optimistic like strings and cellos playing um, outro to this thing. I, don't so do that anymore. I thought that's where we were going, but I, I was going to be impressed if you could pull it off. But as 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 usual with you, I am I am disappointed. Uh-huh. I want to hear I want to hear from Mike back to Casablanca. You know, you've got Bogart and you've got Ingrid Bergman. Who uh-huh. who would be who would be your favorite supporting? Uh, that's one of the great things about that movie. So many great supporting players. Who's your favorite character outside of the uh, the two leads, Mike? Well, I'm, I'm shocked, shocked to know that Gambling, <laughs> to hear that Gambling goes on in this hall. Uh, that, that, there's great that, ones. 
I just say that's the best line from it. It's not him looking at you, kid. That's the best line from Casablanca right there. So. Uh, who's uh, I'm, I'm I'm blanking on the I'm blanking on the 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 portly fella Tom. What's his name? The the one the uh, the 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 guy Sydney, who uh, Sydney Green Street. Sydney. Yeah, there you go. Yeah. Um, yeah, it's 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 full of great stuff. And, and Peter Lorre has a memorable. You know, he's not on the screen very much, but he, he's very memorable and creepy as he always is. So, yeah, it's a good story. It's 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 real. I mean, like it, it holds up, man. It holds up. All I right. think even kids would like it. If you haven't seen it, go check it out. If All right, you're in the mood to be informed about stuff. Go to expressnews.com, which I have not pitched yet but that's still great and the listeners of this podcast all know it's great you can get a good what about deal the newsletter uh on expressnews.com subscription you could sign up for the spurs nation newsletter um and check out turner classic movies this week tom says it's they're doing their oscar thing you'll probably see some casablanca some other good stuff and in the meantime uh take care of each other and keep it real